you're welcome to start, Chair. Thank you. And good evening, everyone, and welcome to uh, this remote meeting of the Eastbourne Borough Council Planning Committee on the 23rd of February 2021. Uh, I am Councillor Jim Murray, Chair of the Planning Committee. And this is our seventh meeting to be held remotely in accordance with the published government regulations. For those participating in the meeting or watching on the live stream, please bear with us as we, uh, just in case we have any technical difficulties. Uh, I'll now take items one to three together. Introductions, attendance, substitutes and de de excuse me, declarations of interest. Uh, can I now ask my fellow committee members to introduce themselves to listeners by a roll call? Uh, this is to be done in alphabetical order in accordance with the published agenda and I will ask that each confirms their full name if they are acting as a substitute and whether or not they wish to make a declaration of interest on any of the items on the agenda. Uh, before I do so, I confirm that we've had apologies from Councillor Jane Lamb, who is substitute for Councillor Paul Metcalf. So uh, I'll start a call. So Councillor Diplock. Thank you, Chair. Good evening, everyone. Councillor Peter Diplock from Old Town. Um, I have a personal interest in the Friday Street Farm uh, agenda item, but it is not a prejudicial interest. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Diplock. So just to explain to the public, uh, a personal interest means that he's um, he, he doesn't need to step aside for any of the voting during this meeting and he can listen in and participate and participate fully. Um, it won't affect uh, how he actually votes. Uh, Councillor Maxted. Thank you, Chair. Good evening, everybody. My name is uh, Councillor Robin Maxted, Upton Ward, and I have no interests to declare. Thank you. Councillor Metcalf. Yes, good evening. It's Councillor Paul Metcalf, Sovereign Ward, and I am substituting for Councillor Lamb this evening, and I have no disclosable interests to declare. Thank you. Councillor Mia. Good evening, everybody. And um, I'm Councillor Mia of um, uh, Langley Ward, and I have no interest to declare. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Murdoch. Thank you, Chair, and good evening, everybody. Uh, Councillor Colin Murdoch for uh, Ratton Ward, and I have no interest to declare. Thank you. Councillor Taylor. Um, Councillor Barry Taylor, uh, Mead's Ward. I have no interest to declare. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Thank you. And Councillor Vaughan. Good evening, everyone. My name is Councillor Candy Vaughan and I'm the Langley Ward and I have no interest to declare. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we're, we're three minutes in and I appear to have made a boo-boo. Uh, the um, lawyer would like to just say a few words, so I'll, I'll allow the lawyer to come in. Yes, good evening, Chair. If I could ask Councillor Diplock to um, give some clarification on what that personal interest is, just to say what the nature of that interest is, so is that the, the public are aware it is just a personal interest and not a prejudicial. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Diplock. Yeah, thank, thank you, Helen, and apologies to everyone. I should have made that clear. It's a personal interest. A close family member lives on the Pennine Way estate. Uh, but it does not colour my uh, my thinking or my decision making on this particular item. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Diplock. Thank you. So also joining us are officers Mr Lee Palmer, Interim Head of Planning, Neil Collins, Specialist Advisor Planning, and Mrs Helen Monaghan, Planning Lawyer, who we've just heard from, uh, who are in attendance to present the reports and respond to any questions from members and keep me in order. Uh, Democratic Services Officer Emily Horn is also in attendance and other Democratic Services Officers are assisting in the background on this meeting. Uh, please can I ask all participants to ensure their microphones have been muted when not speaking and if you have any connectivity issues you may find it will help if you turn off your camera when you are not speaking. All participants are reminded to not take calls on their mobile phones during the course of the meeting. Uh, I will now take item, uh, agenda item number four, the minutes from the last meeting. So the councillors, do, do you wish me to sign the minutes of the last meeting on the 22nd, sorry, 26th of January 2021 as a correct record? I will take it in agreement that uh, if, if you all stay quiet, that you will all agree with me. If, you, if you've got any con concerns, then please speak now. 
and take the minutes as being approved. So thank you, Emily. Um, urgent items of business. The, the, I believe there are no urgent items of business. Okay, in silence. Um, now to ensure that all the parties are clear as to the council's constitution. The committee is not in a position to accept any additional information, any additional documentation sent to us electronically today. Although previously submitted documents will be referred to as part of the officer's pr presentation where appropriate. We now come to the planning applications. For those unfamiliar with the procedure of planning applications, first there is a presentation by the planning officers. Then we would normally hear from the public speakers. However, live public speaking has temporarily been suspended during remote meetings. Instead, the public speakers have been invited to send in their speeches, which will re be read out by an officer. Any received, any received will be heard in this order. Up to one speech from the objectors, a maximum of three minutes. Up to one speech from the supporters, a maximum of three minutes. And a speech from the ward member, a maximum of three minutes. The committee is then invited to discuss the application and I will ask members to raise their hands if they wish to speak. Can all councillors, officers and participants please clearly state their name each time they speak so that, so that it is clear to the members of the public listening who is speaking. Once all of the committee members who wish to speak on the application have done so, I will ask if there is a, a proposer and a seconder for the officer's recommendation and if so we will then move to a vote. If the officer's recommendation is lost, I will ask for an alternative proposal. I will ask the proposer to state the planning reasons for the proposal and ask whether we have a seconder. If necessary, I will seek officer advice on the reasons given and provide the proposer the chance to respond and confirm their proposal. If this is seconded, we will then have a vote on the item. To vote, I will call the name of each committee member present in alphabetical order. Please, please clearly state whether or not you are for, against or abstaining from the vote. Members must not leave the room during the live meeting. It is essential that members are present for the entire presentation and discussion of the application to be able to vote on that item. If a member very briefly loses their internet connection, this may not disqualify them from voting on that item, provided they seek clarification as to anything that they may have missed as soon as possible after they have reconnected. So we move on to agenda item number six, um, application number 200986, section 73A, part re retrospective application for a 1.8 metre close boarded fence at one Ridgelands close Eastbourne. And I'll hand over to Mr Collins, who will give the report for us on this. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, Neil Collins speaking. I'm the Senior Specialist Advisor within the planning team at Eastbourne. I'll just make sure that this is being displayed properly. So uh, yeah, just uh, I'll be introducing this agenda item number six. It's for one Ridgelands Close uh, in Eastbourne. That's in the Upton Ward, uh, just up towards the South Downs. Um, before I go through this presentation, I, I need to make members aware of uh, an incorrectness in the uh, officer uh, report pack and the proposal description uh, in that report which makes reference to section 73A part retrospective application for a 1.8 metre closed boarded fence. Uh, that should be a household application, so it should be description should be for erection of a 1.8 metre closed boarded fence. Uh, there it is considered that there wouldn't be any issues changing that at this point. Uh, so in the event that planning permission was granted, uh, that would be the proposal description that would form uh, the decision notice. Uh, moving on to the presentation, uh, this is the application site. Um, it is a domestic property. Uh, it is located within Ridgelands Close, which is here. Uh, and uh, you can also see Uplands Row, Upland Road sorry, uh, to the southern part of the site. It, the site is slightly unique in that it has this kind of peninsula of land 
uh, which uh, which uh, is betwixt the, the two roads, uh, uh, and there's the topography of that of that peninsula is quite uh, significant in terms of the difference in in land levels. Uh, so this dwelling sits at a lower height than this uh, the Uplands Road uh, street level. Uh, the application is for the, a closed bordered fence, uh, predominantly on this elevation, uh, sorry, this side of the site, uh, but also slightly around the corner into uh, into this uh, this other uh, part of Kirklidge. The drawings submitted with the application show that it would be uh, a 1.8 metre high closed bordered timber fence, uh, and that would be secured by way of uh, concrete posts. Those concrete posts would also be timber faced on the outer side uh, of that enclosure. It's also worth noting that there is some undulation in the land and that results in the land on the uh, application site being slightly higher at certain points in relation to the boundary enclosure. A quick uh, view of the pre-existing situation uh, and this is uh, this app, the application site has been subject to some uh, development already in, in respect to the boundary enclosures, and I'll come on to that. Uh, but this view shows the pre-existing situation, which was uh, which comprised two forms of boundary enclosure. Uh, this part, which was a chain link fence, uh, held up by concrete posts, uh, and there is also uh, uh, an existing timber closed fence also held up by concrete posts. Another view of that from Upland Road shows uh, the nature of that open, um, uh, that open chain link fence with the concrete posts. This next view um, shows a shot of uh, a fence that was erected without the benefit of planning permission. Uh, planning permission is required for uh, a fence of this height. This was a 2.2 metre tall uh, fence uh, and was erected, as I said, without planning permission. It has been a subject of um, enforcement action. As you can see, there was a that's the height of the, the fence that was installed. Uh, this shot shows uh, um, the, the shot of the, as the view of the site following strong winds, uh, whereby part of that fence was, fence was blown over. Uh, including into the street, uh, and this was the resulting view, and, and remains the, the case in terms of this openness to this uh, this land, with many of these posts being um, being broken. Uh, just another view here uh, on the other side of the site. Uh, so this is the view from uh, Ridgeland's quite close, and on the right side, just out of shot, is the application property itself. Uh, this is a a closed boarded fence as well, and it's much uh, the same as the proposed closed boarded fence, although treated differently and obviously weathered uh, because of the amount of time that it's been in situ. Uh, so this particular fence um, is has been treated, uh, and uh, the proposed fence uh, would remain uh, untreated, or insofar as it would weather. So it is anticipated that the uh, the um, the resulting appearance of that fence would silver over time. Uh, it would, just going back to another, excuse me, just going back to this shot, because I think this is useful. So just for members' benefit, the existing fence here uh, is uh, 1.8 meter, eight meters tall and would be comparable in height to the proposed fence, which would continue that fence line along to the remain remainder of that, uh, that part of the curtilage as it faces up the road. So I'll leave uh, the presentation there and just stop that and uh, be happy to answer any questions that members might have. Thank you. Thank you. I'll come back to you in a moment, Mr. Collins. Um, we have two speakers on this. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Palmer, if you wouldn't mind reading those two speeches out for us. Thank you, Chairman. Um, first, a representation from Mr. Enifer. This speech is against the application. 
The original retrospective application for a 2.25 metre high fence was refused by the planning officer in October last year. The fence had been erected unlawfully. The officer's report to planning committee stated that the current scheme had reduced the height of the fence and thus overcome the reason for the said refusal. However, the refusal went on to say it was incongruous, disruptive feature, compromised divergent appearance, in conflict with the save policies of the EBC plan. This is just as relevant to this latest application for a 1.8 metre high fence. The proposed 1.8 metre height is consistent with a small section of, our, of the corner of Ridgelands Close. This is totally different matter when you consider the vast length along Upland Road, border and continuing around the western edge of the property. The report notes that people have commented on the impact of the 2.25 metre fence and says the proposed development would replace this fence, which is true, but only but only difference is the height and thus the negative impact remains because that derives from the solidity, length and materials of the fence, not just its height. I am very concerned and actually incensed that it is now that it has now been approved only with a minimal reduction in heights of the fence and feel very strongly that this is wrong. It is inappropriate in height, scale, style and an awful intrusion. As well as that, strong winds on Norval and this part of Eastbourne and a long expanse of wood is bound to suffer and, and is fraught with risk and danger. For, fortunately, nobody was injured when the last fence was destroyed in the recent gales. The report also mentions that the existing con concrete posts from the old wire mesh fence have been retained, but in fact, many were destroyed at the same time. We live directly opposite this fence, which has replaced the green shrubs and trees with a, f with a five feet foot chain link fence. And the view would be overpowering, oppressive, out of proportion and dominant. We have become very depressed with this view at all times of the day and at night. And the street light above it looks like a prison wall. The shrubs and trees that have all been removed created a natural safe barrier and no houses and regions close were visible. With these removed, all we see is a long expanse of fence and all the houses in the close. The harmonious green feel that the street has been lost. A re any replanting should be of sufficiently mature plants to reinstate some of this quickly. I acknowledge that there was no tree preservation order on the trees that have been removed, but that is not the point in my opinion. It is much more about maintaining the green natural barrier with harmonious green feel, which exists generally on Upland Road as part of the gateway to the Downs, which is an area of outstanding natural beauty. That concludes the uh, representation in objection from Mr. Ennefer. Moving on, if I may, Chairman, we have one speech in support of their application, namely the applicants, Mr. and Mrs. Mitchell. Thank you. We acknowledge the change the proposed fence would bring to Upland Road, especially to those who have been used to a view for many years. We recognise that the original fence referenced in planning application 200444 was unintentionally erected unlawfully and its height potentially incongruous. For this, we apologise. This was done in naivety to the planning laws, but, we, but with a desire to afford security and privacy to our home, our back garden and newly constructed annex. Our house and garden are well below the level of Upland Road. We realise the need for more secure boundary when moving here in 2010. It is reassuring to learn this is supported by the planning officer outlining the recommendations for vulnerable areas as, as exposed side and rear gardens and referenced in the planning officer's report. Whilst we understand the street scene is important, we do not wish to lose sight of the fact that this is our home and our garden. With, refer with reference to comments made concerning removal of greenery and also referenced in the planning officer's report, 
there has never been any formal planting immediately adjacent to the border with Upland Road. There simply isn't the means for anything to grow there. The greenery removed was primarily overgrown bramble, ivy, bindweed growing over the terraced paved section of our garden and a few unhealthy, unhealthy or dead conifers growing in planters at either end of the paving. The clearance was to afford us use of the neglected area of our garden. It is worth pointing out that whilst the clearance of this overgrown vegetation was taking place in the spring 2020, many residents in Upland Road and beyond made positive and pleasant comments about the improvements we were making. We are grateful for and agree with the comments made in the report highlighting, highlighting that 1.8 metre is consistent with the height of the existing fencing around our property, providing a visually continuous boundary to the street scene. We also feel that our ground level immediately adjacent to the proposed fence is at points 60 centimetres higher than the level of the pavement. A minimum of 1.8 is not unreasonable. We agree with the conclusions and recommendations made by the planning officer in respect of the application and wholeheartedly and enthusiastically agree to the proposed conditions of our planting scheme. Indeed, our intention all along has been to broaden the biodiversity in our garden by re replacing old conifers with native fruit trees, planting shrubs more sympathetic to the topography of the garden, and we have already begun to sow a wild flower meadow. We are grateful for the opportunity to present our application to the committee. We would like to thank all, all at the planning office who have been helpful and kind since our communication began, and particularly the planning officer for her work and her recommendation. Thank you, Chairman. That concludes the speech in support of the uh, application on behalf of the applicants, Mr and Mrs Mitchell. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> So, with that, I will hand over to the councillors for any questions. Councillor Taylor. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Sadly, in some ways, sadly, this is a, a situation where the applicant should have gone straight, I think, to the officers and Eastbourne Borough Council to discuss what their proposals were going to be. Um, and in a way, uh, I, I, I understand that their reasons for what they wanted to do is very justified. Can I really say as well to the objectors that uh, I think the fact that it's 1.8 metres actually means that um, they are within the planning rules uh, and we should probably accept that the 1.8 is acceptable. And so therefore uh, I, I feel that uh, perhaps on appealing to the applicant that to reduce the impact of a brand new fence there at 1.8 metres that the, uh, the uh, applicant perhaps creosotes it in some ways to a, a dark oak vision so that it looks a bit more like uh, the original fence that was put up. But um, in my view, um, very unfortunately, um, objectors like this have really no right to a view. So in... in from my point of view, Mr. Chairman, uh, I think this application should be supported. Thank you. Thank you. I, I just clarify your last point there. They have no right to a visual view. Um, to, <laughs> it, it, it just can be interpreted in two ways. No, so, no, no, so, no, so, no, so, no. In general planning rules, that, that, that nobody has a, a right to a visual view. So if, you, if, for example, you've got a view of the sea and somebody built some houses in front of you, that, that's unfortunate. But, uh, no, as a planning officer, yeah. you, you have no right to a view. Yeah. Look, I'm all right. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. I, that, that, that's, said what no, I wanted to say. Councillor Taylor. I, I, I am supporting you. I, I was just clarifying that it, it's a, a visual view rather than a personal view. Oh, 
Yes. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> visit. Yes. All right. I apologise. All right. Thank you. Councillor Councillor Diplock. Thank you, Chair. Um, if this is, as Councillor Taylor says, is, is kind of one of these ones which is, I know it's caused some distress to both the applicants themselves and some of the residents locally as well. Um, in, and that's really unfortunate. It's so, such... Councillor Diplock, if you can hear me, we, we've lost your visual. Whether or not you'd like to turn your camera off whilst you're talking. So, sorry, Councillor Diplock, we, we lost all Am of that. I'm back in the room. You froze, yeah. You're back in the room now. My screen's frozen, I think. Can, can you hear me? If you could bear with us, please, people, we will just try and get Councillor Diplock back into the uh, in, into the meeting. We're going to have to go for the classic uh, turn it off and on again. I'm, I'm afraid. Can you hear us again now, Councillor Diplock? Yes, I can. Okay, so we, we lost all of that speech from yourself. If you would like to restart. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so, yeah, just saying, as Councillor Taylor said, this is a really unfortunate um, uh, unfortunate situation. I know that both the, the applicants have suffered some distress and I know that the residents locally have suffered some distress as well. Um, could I just ask um, in a minute Neil Collins just to clarify with some of the pictures that he showed us um the pictures that showed a new fence was that the new fence at 1.8 meters or was that the old new fence at two meters plus um in a minute if he could confirm that that, that would be helpful um i note um councillor taylor mentioned about perhaps treating the the fence so it was less visually um jarring in it in its brand new circumstance i don't know how long the weathering and the silvering would be expected to take uh, and and perhaps whether there are any other methods i know we can't enforce it as a condition but whether there are any other methods that would help the fence sit more sympathetically in its surroundings in the short term again perhaps that's something officers can comment on I, overall you know i i think councillor taylor and councillor murray are absolutely right there's not much that we can say where we can't approve this um 1.8 meters is reasonable i appreciate it's the distress that it's caused um but there are some mitigating uh, actions that perhaps could be taken and perhaps mr collins could come back on those thank you chair thank you i'm going to go to mr collins first to answer those two points if you wouldn't mind thank you um, so I'm going to share the screen again just to go back to um, the views of the site. Just in, in response to the comment about what we could see previously on those views. This particular fence here is the fence that was um, erected without planning permission at a taller height than is proposed within this application. So the proposal is for a lesser height than can be seen here. Um, just moving on to this next view, you can see that this was the next stage in the process and is, is practically the current view of the site, uh, whereby some of that unauthorised fence has been blown down following the very high winds that we had. Um, and, and therefore, this, this application has been made at this point in time with that, you know, that uh, the site being in that particular state um, and uh, and hasn't nothing's been erected um, w without you know the, the you know waiting for the, the formal grant of this planning permission. Thank you. And the other question we asked was um, about whether or not there could be any stain applied to the fence. Now I, th I think that would be quite a delicate one because 
the, the applicant might not want to do it. The, the people across the road might not want it painted dark brown. Um, is, is there an option there for the, for the officers to go away and negotiate something if, if the committees um, deem it appropriate? Um, there is the option for that to happen um, if uh, the if the committee so wish. Uh, I think, uh, as you've mentioned, Chair, it would be possible for for officers to negotiate with the applicant. Uh, I think there would it is difficult when there are lots of different um, other interested individuals involved with the with the with the application. Uh, people with you know interest in in the appearance. Um, it would be difficult to uh, service the opinions of some of the some individuals and not others if there wasn't common agreement. So um, I, I will say that there is the option of, of uh, going away with delegated authority to to look at different options, uh, and we could uh, and when I say we officers could negotiate something that would, as far as practically possible, meet the uh, the meet with the uh, aspirations. Uh, of other individuals within the community um, and I'd be happy to do that if, if the committee so wished. I'll just mention something else uh, that, that came up as a result of the question and that was to do with uh, softening the development in terms of you know its appearance and uh, there is another aspect to the recommendation which is uh, a condition for landscaping uh, and as the applicant has outlined within the, the speech uh, that they would be happy to, to, uh, to to fulfil that condition, and that's to increase some uh, planting that has been lost, uh, that was lost as a result of clearance of, of sort of scrub and, uh, and other sort of low level uh, foliage within the site. So it is understood that that, that scheme would would formulate a, a kind of soft landscape soft landscape soft landscaping scheme behind the fence. And it would be a, a matter of time as to when that would, you know, particularly have come into effect in terms of its matureness and softening of the uh, of the fence um, but it is, it is uh, proposed as part of the recommendation uh, to you know for a condition as as part of planning permission thank you very much so i'm going to go back to the councillors now um if you could give me a, a view on how you feel about whether or not we apply any finish or we ask for any finish to be applied, that would be useful for me um, for, for summing up. So I've got Councillor Metcalf first. Thank you, Chair. Uh, just a question I'd like to ask. I, Neil did mention uh, this being a condition. Can we impose a condition that the fence is painted, uh, that's the new fence at 1.8, um, preferably a, a dark brown, but also could we add that not only the new fence be painted, but in fact the condition that the whole fence is painted, because surely if only part of it is painted, that's going to stand out like a sore thumb. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to come back to that later on. Councillor uh, Max, did I have next? Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I can I can understand the um, the concerns that uh, people living in houses opposite uh, this property have, have got and have raised. Um, I mean, they're used to having a chain link fence. They used to be able to see through the fence. Uh, that gives greater depth to their to their visual amenity. Um, um, but of course, I, I do uh, I do appreciate the the applicants' needs for a feeling of security within their own property. Um, I, I do think that, that it was a shame that they put up this. It's rather large, 2.2 metre high fence uh, without getting consent. Uh, it may be because because the land was higher on their side of the boundary that they thought they were within their rights to add another 1.8 metres on top of that. But whatever it is, they've 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 <laughs> um, they've admitted they were at fault and and want to put up a 1.8 metre fence. It is a it's not particularly nice aesthetically, a long line of, of the same colour. And I certainly hear where councillors are coming from as far as as, as toning it down or, or whatever. But of course, it, it will weather over time. And I mean, this happens within two or three years anyway. Um, and so it will turn a sort of a grey sort of colour anyway. Um, and, and I do appreciate the applicant's need for, for privacy. Uh, there's there's a house on the other side of the, on their side, but the other side of the close, number four, 
um, they've got a brick wall for the whole boundary length of their property. Um, it, it's it's stepped down, but it does raise to probably at least 1.6, 1.7 metres in places, but it is stepped. Um, but of course, they have got a lower brick wall and, and people walking up the pavement can see right into their garden. They obviously don't mind, but I think these applicants do mind. And I think the applicants do have a right to privacy in their in their own property. So um, I would support the application. And, and, and really, as far as imposing a condition on the colour, I, I, I don't think it's necessary. I think it'll, it'll wear over time. Thanks, Chair. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Vaughan. Thank you, Chair. Um, Councillor Candy Vaughan. Um, I'm just wondering about uh, their upkeep of the um, of the pavement side of the fence, because lots of um, graffiti artists love a new fence. Will they uh, will they be clearing up any graffiti should it turn up so that um, they keep the fence in a very good condition. Thank you. Thank you. I'll take that question at the end again. Um, Councillor Diplock, you wanted to come back in again? Yeah, thank you, Chair. And, and Councillor Vaughan, we have, have very high quality uh, graffiti artists in Old Town. Um, I can vouch for that. Um, just, just to say, I, you know, I, I am supportive of this application. I don't want to be prescriptive about painting a fence. But I, I just would like to see some sort of measures, and I just don't know what they are, to make sure that the fence sits sympathetically within within the general area. That that was it. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Okay, so I'm, I'm seeing a sort of general opinion that we uh, that we're happy with the size of the fence. We 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 think it's sensible that the owners of the garden get some privacy, as well as sort of trying to respect the. The, the views of the people in the, in the street. Um, I don't want to force uh, a, a certain colour on on the owners um, through uh, a condition, um, but it might be worth um, the officers just having a word with, with with those involved to see if they can negotiate something which they're a bit happier with. Now that they now that the, the 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 planning permission has been granted or potentially going to be granted for the for the fence, um, but it, it needs to be negotiated. I'm, I'm not going to put that in as, as a condition. Um, so I, I need a proposer, please. Councillor Maxted. Councillor Maxted uh, uh, and Councillor Diplock is seconding. So. Um, so we have a proposer and a seconder. Um, I will ask you all now to vote, please. Uh, and when you're in this, when you're calling this vote, please can you state that you have not lost internet connection during the course of the item and are unable to vote. So if you've lost internet connection and you missed any of the, the speech, then please let us know. Uh, obviously, we know that Councillor Diplock um, dropped out for a few seconds, but we got him back again and he, re he, he spoke again. So not worried about that. But if any of the other councillors did drop out and I didn't notice, please let me know. So I'll ask you in order, either you for, against or abstain, and please reiterate that uh, you did not lose internet connection. So Councillor Diplock. For, I did drop out momentarily, but came back in and said what I said again. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Max did. For, and I didn't lose internet connection. Thank you. Councillor Metcalf. Four, and I did not lose internet connection. Thank you. Councillor Mia. Four, but I would like to agree on um, Councillor Candy's point, that graffiti thing, but I'm four and I have not lost any connection. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Murdoch. Yes, I'm four and I did not lose internet connection. Thank you. Councillor Taylor. Yes, I'm four and I did not lose uh any internet connection and the only reason i suggested creosote was to preserve the fence in good order okay bye thank you mm. councillor vaughan i'm four and i didn't lose internet connection and i councillor jim murray will also vote four and i did not lose any internet connection so the uh, application is approved um, number two zero zero nine eight six 
Section 73A part application for the 1.8 metre close boarded fence um, at One Ridgelands Close. Thank you. And with that, we will move on to agenda item number seven, uh, 200855. Outline application with all matters reserved for siting of 18 residential units uh, at Ocklinge Chalk Pit, Eastbourne, Ratton. And I believe this is yours again, Mr. Collins. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I'll just share my screen. Members should be able to see that now. Uh, yes, this is agenda uh, item number seven. Uh, it's for Auckland's Chalk Pit, um, and that's uh, shown on the screen now with the, the application site outlined in red. Uh, members will probably be aware of this site. Um, this is Willingdon Road, uh, and uh, the site is accessed uh, here from Willingdon Road onto a private road, which is named Coppice Court. And it's named so because there is a Coppice Court care home, which is this building can be seen here. And uh, that, that uh, private road falls down into the site. Uh, and this, may, this forms the main body of the proposal here. Um, with another view of this, uh, as you can see, uh, surrounding roads as well, uh, Selmeston Road and Tovey Close with properties uh, and uh, uh, the, rear, the rear gardens of those properties backing onto the site. The site is uh, heavily populated with trees, as can be seen in this view. However, there is a what perhaps can't be seen uh, at the moment is that it's quite flat on the base of, of the site. I'll come on to that in a minute. Uh, as I said, it's, it's a, there's a short, uh, sorry, a, a, a small uh, fall in the land coming, sort of gradual fall in the land coming from this uh, access point uh, and it falls into the base and the surrounding edges are um, more steep in, uh, in their topography. And this site has uh, been used in the past, uh, first for the excavation of, saw, uh, for, of chalk, uh, chalk, hence its name, uh, and then uh, by the civil defence um, uh, back in the 60s and that was uh, ended in around 60, 60 60, 68. I think, uh, and since then, more recently, it's been used by the East Sussex, East Sussex College Group, uh, and on, on a more sort of a, um, uh, ad hoc basis. Some quick views of the site. Uh, this is uh, from Coppice Court, the private access road. It shows uh, two buildings that are already on the site here, uh, which would be retained uh, as part of any scheme. Um, uh, as proposed at the moment, although they don't form part of this proposal, and the reason being uh, that they would be refurbished and that uh, they don't form part of the works that would require planning permission that form the, the basis for the proposal in this application. This is the access to the site itself, uh, and there is an, a turning point in, in Coppice Court, the private road, which you can just about see here. There's another view back towards uh, that, that private road. As you can see the, 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 uh, the land rising up to Willingdon Road. This is Coppice Court, a care home, uh, and then the dwellings that would be retained here. The view within the site, uh, as I mentioned, the base of the site is quite flat, uh, and the, uh, the main predominance of trees are located around the banked area of that, uh, the site uh, on, on each of the, uh, the perimeter of that site. There was a previous permission on this site, uh, and it's useful to outline that at this stage. Uh, that was back in 2009 that planning permission was granted, uh, and that was for um, a residential institution for, for those with learning difficult, uh, disabilities. And, uh, and this was what was proposed for these semicircular uh, buildings uh, and access roads. But uh, this is also quite useful to understand the topography. Um, because as can be seen here, the topography is sometimes very steep in places uh, and more gradual uh, in others. Predominantly, the, the southern part of uh, the site is more gradual in terms of its banking, uh, and there is a, a much steeper topography on the northern 
Clapham portion uh, next to the Selmeston Road properties. Uh, this proposal is for outlying planning permission for 18 dwellings uh, with all matters reserved. So the plan that can be seen in front of the committee at the moment is uh, an indicative site layout. It's not something that would be approved as part of this application if, uh, if planning permission were to be approved. Uh, it is strictly for the, uh, the quantum of development, i.e. 18 dwellings, uh, and the siting of 18 dwellings on the site, uh, and that's uh, before the committee to be decided with all other matters to be uh, reserved for uh, scrutiny at a later date. These visuals have been submitted with the application. Uh, they show uh, a, a visual of what, you know, indicative visual of what could uh, be accommodated within the site. Within the site. I would just um, draw attention that this perhaps doesn't show an accurate re reflection of uh, the, the, the height or um, steepness of the bank banking with, in relation to any dwellings that would be uh, it would be cited there. Uh, and I think probably this particular view and these views show um, a much higher banking than is actually present on site and uh, and also that uh, that uh, the, the any proposed dwellings wouldn't necessarily uh, be include excavation into that cliff face. But as I mentioned, all other matters would be reserved uh, for um, uh, consideration at a later date. Uh, the application is approved, uh, sorry, is recommended for approval subject to all those reserved matters. The reserved matters are uh, in the, the officer's report uh, available to members. I'll just mention some of the considerations quickly um, before I hand over to, to, for questions. Um, the, 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 the primary consideration on this site is the, the potential eco ecological disturbance. So it's understanding um, the ecological nature and uh, value of the site. Uh, the applicant has submitted a pre preliminary ecological assessment, and that involves uh, a stage one habitat survey which understands the presence of species on the site. Uh, it, also, uh, it also identifies that further assessment would be required in relation to any uh, detailed scheme, and it is considered that that would need to be done um, in tandem to understand how each would relate to each other. Um, the county ecologist has been consulted as part of this application, uh, and I can confirm that um, we have received uh, comments from the county ecologist now and just as of about half an hour before this meeting uh, um, I've managed to, to look at those comments and, and I can see that there is no principal objection from the county ecologist uh, subject to uh, the requirement for an ecological impact assessment submitted with the reserve matters uh, that has already been uh, recommended in the officer report so uh, it is considered that um, in contrary to what was con what was outlined within the officer report, the recommendation to the committee is is to that this could be approved tonight, rather than providing delegated authority to officers to await those uh, those um, comments from the county ecologist. Um, all other matters, um, including drainage, flood risk, uh, and uh, and any any other pertinent matters for uh, this particular scheme, would be for reserve matters. Uh, so really, it's just the quantum of development that's being uh, considered here tonight. Thank you. And back to you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Collins. And again, we have some speeches that need to be read out from the public. Uh, Mr. Palmer, if you could go ahead. Thank you, Chairman. I have one speech uh, against the application submitted from Mrs. S and Miss M. Verrill. This speech is against the application. Whilst appreciating, appreciating the need for housing, we strongly feel residential development in this chalk pit is wholly unsuitable for the following reasons. Paragraph heading, total destruction of biodiversity. Since the disbanding of, of the civil defence in 1968, this site has never fully been used and therefore has remained undisturbed for over 50 years and even prior to this had 
probably little human interference. The value of this is seen in the preliminary ecological report. There are lizards, slow worms, hedgehogs, foxes, badgers, bats, owls, plus numerous butterflies, moths, birds, bees and invertebrates. The wide number of native trees and associated shrubs have benefited from the unique environment the pit has offered. It is the balance of woodland and open space areas that has developed this site to become what it is seen today. Any development must take into account and not remove too much of either. Without adequate green space, the slow worms, for instance, we will be at risk, and there's a need to be and there needs to be consideration for minimizing human interference. Nature trails have been mentioned, but this is a small site and any human access into its remote areas should be discouraged. We would ask the planning committee to carefully consider this critical element of building density against existing wildlife potential habitat destruction. Paragraph heading, health and safety risks. It is called the chalk pit for the very reason that it has some very steep chalk faces. There is particularly steep chalk face only a feet away from our home, and we are extremely worried that the edge of the pit, which is hidden by undergrowth, could potentially result in subsidence or landslide. Nobody has ever visited us to view how very close we lie to the edge of the pit. We would require a guarantee that any developer will be liable should our home or ground suffer subsidence or landslip. We regularly hear chalk falls and any intrusion into the chalk or felling of trees to form nature trails could easily cause instability of the chalk face. An example of this is the collapsed path at Hollywell's Italian Garden, formerly a chalk pit. Paragraph heading, dangerous accessibility. The concealed entrance and exit to the site is onto an extremely busy hill of Willingdon Road, where traffic continuously, continuously exceeds 30 mile an hour speed limits. There is no bus service whatsoever on this section of the A2270. Extra traffic resulting from this development could lead to some very serious accidents. Summary. We are constantly being requested to plant trees to help the environment and are reminded of the mental health benefits these green spaces and wildlife bring. This oasis of nature surrounded by an already vast residential area has remained undisturbed for decades and should be nurtured and protected for the future. Once it's built upon, it will be lost forever. Thank you, Chairman. That concludes the speech in objection. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Palmer. Um, Mr. Collins, would you like to come back in at all just before I introduce the, the councillors? Thank you. Nothing further to say at this stage. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, so just to clarify, the, the, the applicant has been a bit naughty here by putting in these lovely pictures of this four storey uh, amazing complex that we could possibly get in there. There's no anticipation that we're going to get that in any way, shape or form. So please ignore these. Um, all that we're looking at is the fact that is that site suitable for 18 potential dwellings. And uh, if, if we agree that, then that's what we're agreeing tonight. And then all other matters will come back at a later planning stage. So who would like to start? Councillor, uh, sorry, I've got uh, uh, Mrs Monaghan. Just put her hand up. I'll just go to her first. Yes, hello, Chair. Um, could I ask Mr Collins to refer the members to the addendum that was provided so as that, uh, in case the public are not aware of this, um, just so as that they are aware what the members have seen. Thank you. Mr Collins? Thank you. Uh, yes, yeah, so um, the, the addendum just uh, made a reference to, uh, if, I, if I'm correct in, in, in understanding what uh, Mr Monaghan is referring to, there is an addendum uh, which to, to um, the, the members which asked for a slight uh, amendment to one of the reserve matters or a condition uh, which, re which referred to one 
one of the um, the uh, reserve matters, and that was just in terms of the arbicultural details. Uh, so there is a condition uh, for, for arbiculture, and that was to, to, to ensure that specific details were submitted. Uh, it omitted a, a particular element that is, is useful and actually very much required in relation to the provision of new housing, and that's an arbicultural shade assessment. Uh, so that's been included within the um, within reserve matters and the conditions to the reserve matters. Um, and to ensure that there is a shade assessment submitted with those reserve matters to understand how uh, any resulting scheme or any proposed scheme uh, would be overshadowed or how those trees, retained trees, would overshadow uh, proposed dwellings. Uh, so the only other parts of the addendum relating to this particular agenda item have been addressed in my presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I had a flurry of hands go up there whilst I was listening to Mr. Collins, so I, I apologise if I get you in the wrong order, but I'm going to take um, Metcalf, Diplock, Murdoch and Taylor. So, Councillor Metcalf first. Thank you, Chair. Could I give way to Councillor Murdoch on this, because it's uh, as it's in Ratton, please? Certainly can, Councillor Murdoch. Thank you, Chair, uh, and thank you, Councillor Metcalf. Now, the situation is, and the picture shown by Mr. Collins doesn't actually show a true picture of this site. Now, I didn't even know this existed, and so I went along to have a look this week. Now, if we go to this site, and I believe that members, before they vote anything on here, should look at this site. It is like a bomb crater. The sides are steep all the way round. It's not like just one side, a steep side, they're all the way. And if you look at the trees, it looks like the trees are holding together those steep sides. Now, for someone to think they could build houses actually suitable for people to live in because you're building them in a deep hole, i.e. if you go there in wintertime or even now, the sun, which is low level, doesn't even get within that hole. So it's actually quite unsuitable, I believe, for all year round living. You may get the sun in the summer months, but in winter months or six months of the year, because the sun doesn't reach any peak levels um, and because it's in steep sided slopes, the whole site, I'm afraid to me, it's a very unsuitable site for development. Now, the lady who actually got in touch to say she was against this, I can certainly understand because when you look at the trees that are, that are actually growing on this site, a lot of them are within them chalk steep parts of this site and if you start to take them away because of the way they are growing they're not growing straight up they grow out a bit sideways before they go up you're actually going to disturb all their root systems all within the chalk and i think you will cause major problems to surrounding properties and even the main willingdon road which when you look at it is only a couple of feet before them steep sides start sloping into this hole so I do propose that if members have never seen this, and I haven't, even living in Ratton, didn't know it existed, should see this site for themselves because the pictures do not show a true visual, I mean, of what this is like and how steep and how far down this hole goes. Um, the properties they're going to redevelop later is right at the top at the entrance, which, yes, that's at the top, no problems at all. But this does go down into a big hole, which I think you need to see to make a decision. OK, thank you, Chair. Thank you. There, there was a number of points there, Mr. Collins, um, some of which I believe were sort of more building control rather than planning. I, I don't know if you could clarify some of those for us, please. Thank you, Chair. Yes, I'll just uh, come back on some of those points um, to separate them out because outline planning permission is being proposed here with all matters reserved the extent of development on site and where those uh, resulting dwellings would be located on the site uh, their relationship in terms of how I mean, you know, being served by uh, daylight sunlight would all be uh, for for that reserve matter stage it would also be for uh, uh, to understand you know any disturbance or tree removal that would be required as a part of that so there would be further discussion happen, happening at a later date 
to understand any disturbance to any uh, raised or, or steep steepness to the site or any excavation to allow for, for, um, for dwellings. Um, it isn't, I should note that it isn't actually proposed that a huge amount of excavation would be, uh, would take place as part of this application. Uh, even the indicative plans don't show that uh, the dwellings would be built, you know, far into the cliff face. So all those things could be considered later. In terms of the actual stability of the cliff face, that is something that is, it doesn't fall within uh, material planning considerations uh, and for our consideration uh, for this particular application. Uh, our colleagues in building control who deal with building regulations would uh, deal with the uh, structural stability of, of buildings uh, and we're unable to stipulate within any permission uh, that, that those kind of stability details. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I've heard to catch Sorry, Jeff. Could I just state then perhaps we could arrange perhaps for a site visit before we make any decisions on this site? Um, well, I, I personally have been to the site. Um, most of the, of, of, sorry, most of the committee members normally do a site visit before the planning meeting. Is there anybody who's not been to the site yet? Councillor Vaughan, but everybody else has already attended site and had a look around. I, I know the site particularly well. Um, I, I was looking to do a project there a few years ago with the college. Um, but um, so I understand all the things that you're talking about. But I, 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 I do feel that under normal protocol, we've, we've all had a good site visit there and we are only discussing outline at the moment. Um, and quite a lot of things that you were talking about there are, are under building control. So whether or not the, the, the sides of the cliff are going to collapse if, if they do the, the work is, is not within our remit. All that we're deciding is whether or not that space is capable of taking 18 houses. Um, so, so Councillor Metcalf. Thank you, Chair. When I first saw the indicative view of, of these houses, it certainly reminded me of a a troglodyte existence, the sort of troglodyte existence that you might see in parts of the Loire Valley. Probably many have seen them. I certainly have. Um, I realise that uh, that is only an indicative view and possibly they wouldn't be built like that. But to have houses that are so close to what I can describe as a cliff face, I really can't see that, uh, that uh, being, being a good idea. But also, I would like to refer, I know the site extremely well, uh, for much the same reason as you, Chair. Um, I remember when the motor vehicle department of the college had garages, right, I think I'm exactly where the, the uh, care home is now and, and other parts. And I've certainly been into that site many times. I have to say, probably 40 or 50 years ago, um, but I don't think very much has changed. And we certainly used to have bonfire night parties there in my days at college uh, on that site. It was ideal. But uh, if I could just refer to the aerial view that um, was, was shown, the aerial view with all those lovely trees there makes it look a very verdant site. Very green and therefore I, I just wonder how much water is actually on that site because it's a chalk um, I believe we say pervious chalk, it's, it's, there's a lot of water in the chalk. Um, and I wonder if that's been taken into consideration. Sadly, if we lose a lot of those trees, uh, as I said before, I do not like to see the loss of trees, but my gosh, don't they look green? They must be getting a lot of water. And my last point I might mention is the entrance. The entrance onto um, the Willingdon Road uh, I, I really feel that that for, for, an, for 18 houses with families, with cars, with the care home, that is not a suitable entrance to have into, into that site. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for your thoughts there. Councillor Diplock. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, know I went to the site today. It's one of those ones. I, I am not as experienced as certain other members of the committee, so I don't have quite so long a memory. Um, but I do live quite close and I went to see it today um, and I, and I recognise both uh, the, the comments that Councillor Metcalf and Councillor Murdoch have made. Um, looking at the report from Mr Collins, 
I fully appreciate that um, the county ecologist has provided their report to you today. And I, and I absolutely understand it's not your fault that we have not seen it. But I just wonder how the rest of the committee feel about asking to decide something that we have not seen ourselves beforehand. Um, it doesn't sit quite comfortably with me. Um, I, I have to agree with Councillor Metcalf on the access, um, the entrance there. there there's a there's kind of a, a pedestrian bit in the middle of the road, which is frequently used by dog walkers, school children going to and from. And the addition of 18 houses uh, in there with the extra traffic that would bring, that, that leaves me a little worried as well. Um, and finally, I notice in the report that it says, um, and, and this chimes with what Councillor Metcalf and, and Murdoch have said about the hollow, you know, it's very low down. In the report, I think it said, you know, in a one to 30 year um, weather event, um, there's the likelihood of flooding to a depth of 0 0.9 metres. Now that's, number one, that's, that's pretty deep. Um, and number two, a one to 30 year event, you know, in my experience over the last 10 years, that's probably now a one to 10 year event. Um, so those are just the things I, that flagged to me. I'd be interested to hear what other committee members think. Thank you. Uh, okay, thank you, Councillor Diplock. There's a few points there that I'm going to direct back to, Council, uh, to Mr. Collins. So uh, East Sussex County Council transport reports, um, we've got one of them. Um, the uh, arboriculturist uh, re report, sorry, not the arboriculturist, the, um, the ecology report. At the moment, I'm, I'm assuming that that just says at the, with at first glance it's okay, but we need to scrutinise. So that will come back again when we go for full planning permission. Um, and, uh, and again, the, the water, I, I believe, will come back at the, at the latter planning stage again. But if you could just clear up those points for me, Mr. Collins. Thank you. Um, I'll just take drainage first because that's quite a considerable uh, consideration. So um, we have received comments from East Sussex County Council Suds. Uh, they have said that it would obviously be subject to uh, sort of more detailed scrutiny of any SUD scheme that would be uh, brought forward on the site. Um, obviously, um, as many probably will know, chalk is uh, is, is very uh, porous and, and uh, has good properties in terms of infiltration. So uh, there aren't any um, services in close proximity to the site where uh, it is considered that adequate um, drainage could be connected to. And just because of the top of this sort of bowl-shaped topography of the site, it's likely that infiltration will be the, the, main, um, the main way of uh, disposing of water. So that would be for uh, consideration at a later date. So obviously it is not something that we have details in front of us to consider now, uh, and it is something that would, would be, be, be uh, required uh, for scrutiny at a later date in, in liaison with our colleagues at East Sussex County Council. Uh, and that also picks up the, the um, the issue of flood risk. Uh, so again, it would be for the reserve matter stage to, to understand what flood mitigation measures would be proposed, but specifically in relation to the design and location of those houses. Uh, obviously, that could be subject to significant change in terms of their, um, their design, you know, the stacking arrangement where the main um, living spaces within those dwellings are, uh, but it's just for uh, for members' um, benefit, 18 dwellings could take any form from now onwards to reserve a matter stage. So they could be detached dwellings, they could form um, uh, uh, small cluster blocks of flats, those kind of things. There's lots of options going forward, uh, but it is for reserve matters to consider those kind of things together to understand how they all form part of a larger, more comprehensive scheme. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Taylor. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Can I first of all say that in the report where it says uh, 4.2, I was on the planning committee, but I certainly didn't vote. I didn't vote for this to be implemented because in my view, and I, I do apologise if you feel that I'm... Uh, I'm uh, criticising what you, Mr Chairman, are trying to do. 
But this is a classic situation of where we're trying to push through a hole in the ground for human habitation. And you're just trying to push it on to the reserve matters all the time. And in my view, that's not the way that we should be going. We should be looking at this application as a hole in the ground fit for human habitation. And, and in actual fact, you can get a good idea because the two houses, and I've been down, I'm sure you all, you all drove down there if you went and saw it and, and did a, a, a U-turn where the two Victorian houses are existing, which they are proposing to refurbish. Now, the reason those houses are empty and haven't been refurbished is because it's a horrible place to live. It's down in a hole, gets no sun, and and I, and I do believe um, that's what, 2.1, Promoting health, if you look at 2.1, where it says promoting health for communities, there is no, hardly any sun there, so they get no vitamin D. And it, and uh, then we've got um, 2.3, Eastbourne Core Strategy, outdoor play space. Can you imagine children down this hole in the ground? Doesn't... And then we, it's already been mentioned about the fact that it's chalk and it absorbs because it says it's got a, a low impact on flooding and, and the fact that it's chalk. Yes, it is chalk, but unfortunately, with chalk, it absorbs the water. Then at winter time, it freezes, expands and cracks the chalk away, which then tumbles into the and it's only the vegetation that's there at the present moment which is holding it together. At this stage, because when it comes to the neck, we, we might approve it for human habitation, and then when it comes to the, the reserve matters, we say, oh, well, we agreed it for human habitation, and so we should now start to work uh, with the reserve matters to res resolve. And you were right, Mr Chairman, at the beginning, this this montage that was given given was a total a total uh, fob off with what we were doing. If you look at, oh, sorry, I've changed my glasses. If you look at five point five five, where it says the proposal could be one bedroom uh, flats at forty percent. Am I, and two bedrooms at 30%, three bedrooms at 20%, four bedrooms at 10%. So what we are looking at is proposing that these one bedroom flats are for affordable housing. So what you're doing is you're sticking people that need affordable housing in a great big hole in the ground. And I, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, but I get very angry when I see such a development. I I would move, uh, and I hope that maybe Councillor Murdoch, that we refuse this application, at least defer it until we can make a site visit. Uh, but uh, I could go on, Mr Chairman, but I, I please don't let this go through and then we have to discuss what we should do about how we expect people uh, uh, to live in a hole in the ground. I think at this stage we need to be against it. And and before I get you, 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 oh, you want to shut me you, up? All right. Before you become predetermined, I, I, I'll, I'll just predetermined under you. what? What? No, what, what, sorry. What, 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 what I, the basis I, I declared. What, what, I would declared. I've looked at this. I've been to a site visit. I haven't predetermined. Mr. I've taken. Mr. I've Mr. Taylor. I have pre gone in, and I. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. I have not predetermined. Don't try and try and shut me up by saying I predetermined. I didn't, and I made it specific. I've made special care that I listened to what people have said, 
And I'm sorry, this is a hole in the ground that is not suitable for human habitation, unless perhaps with crushed concrete, they filled it up at least halfway before they even considered using it for human habitation. Sorry, Mr. Chairman, I didn't predetermine. Believe you me. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Taylor. We, we take recommendations at the end of the discussion. So if you start making recommendations halfway through, then you are predetermining yourself, I'm, I'm sorry to say. But um, the, the, I, I would just like to pick up on your first point there, where you were saying that I'm trying to push this through. I'm not in any way trying to push this through. What I'm trying to do is focus your minds on the fact that this is outline and it's not, uh, it's not going to be the full application. Um, and there are a number of issues that we can't take into account because they are building control rather than the actual um, r rather than the actual um, planning um, planning matters that we can consider. OK, so. With that. We've had Councillor Taylor, we now move on to Councillor Vaughan, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh Councillor County Vaughan. Um, I'm actually with Miss uh, with Councillor Diplock here. Uh, we haven't seen the ecology report. There could be badgers, there could be bats, there could be any number of animals there that we would um, be turfing out of a place where they've found a home. So um, I would like to see the report, the ecology report, before I even think about saying yes, people can start to develop. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ball. Councillor, uh, Mr Collins, could you just come back in on the ecology report for me and um, explain that we can, if we wanted to, go through tonight, but it would still come back to us? When the Council uh, consider outline applications, <clears throat> We do so uh, by asking for relevant information to make the decision. So when all matters reserve, are reserved with outline permission, uh, we are we consider what the pr principal considerations are for the site. In this respect, for this particular proposal for the siting of 18 dwellings on the site, the principal, principal considerations included ecology. Uh, the main ones were ecology and trees. So the ecological impact and the arboricultural impact. Those two uh, main considerations have been addressed in submitted information already. We have a preliminary uh, ecological impact assessment that's been submitted with the application. That has been scrutinised by the county ecologist. And uh, I understand the concerns in terms of not having sight of the county ecologist's uh, comments. Uh, but the county ecologist has um, mentioned that uh, there is no principal objection to uh, the, the, uh, the grant of planning permission in this case. The ecological impact will, will always be considered at a later date. It may be something that forms part of a principal objection at a later date uh, in terms of the, the impact on the site. For example, for not uh, the ability uh, or inability rather to not be able to uh, to cite protected, protected species elsewhere. So for at reserve matters stage, a number of things will need to be submitted and overcome in order for development to take place. So there is always the opportunity for scrutiny of the ecological impact uh, and also in liaison with the county ecologist. Uh, just in terms of the dealing with the issue of the county ecologist's comments coming in at this late stage, uh, I would put to the committee the ability to delegate to officers uh, and uh, to, to make that decision following sight of that by committee members. Thank you. And whilst I've got you there, Mr Collins, could I just get you to clarify now the, the history of this site? Uh, it, it, has there only been one other application, which is for the um, uh, residential uh, institution? Yes, that's correct. And so that's the only application we've had for, uh, in, on, in March 2009. OK, thank you. Councillor Mir.
Okay, can you hear me, Chairman? Mr. Chairman? Can you hear me? We can, yes, thank you. Oh, right. Okay, right, sorry, I was uh, distracted. Well, actually, um, this was, um, uh, this this did came in in 2009. I remember I was sitting in there, and as uh, Councillor Taylor has said, yes, um, uh, we rem I remember a fair of amount of the um, the talk. But unfortunately, um, there is something that I was going to talk about, but um, uh, uh, Councillor Candy has already mentioned one thing. And although uh, Councillor Diplock has mentioned some of the part of my question, so really I haven't got much to say. I think it is important that we all um, see this particular area because there are certain uh, things that we have to look at in. Uh, the county may have say things without even coming in there. They usually sort of look at the uh, the internet and see this site, or I don't know how they do that, but there are certain things I, I never agree with the, with the county. Um, but in this particular site, the entrance is one of the main issues which has been already talked about. I don't want to get in there. So, um, and it's um, Willingdon Road is a quite a slopey road. So if you if you look at the whole site and you can see down this slope, then people turn into that entrance. There is lots of difficulties. So I would certainly um, think that um, you know the the way everybody is talking, and uh, I agree with almost everyone really at this stage. Um, and uh, we'll have to see how the vote goes. So I'll I'll just uh, stay remain for the moment, and uh, that'll be it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Maxted. Thank, thank you, Chair. Um, I'm, I'm just concerned about outline planning consent. Um, I mean, there's a there's a statement here saying it should be noted that this application seeks outline permission with all matters reserved. Um, I mean, we, we'd we'd be making a decision if we were if we were to vote in favour of this application. We would. We would, in principle, be saying yes. We're quite happy for this this piece of land to be used for housing for people to live in. Uh, but of course, I mean that they have the applicant has specified 18 units, so there is one bit of detail there. Um, I mean the the indicative site layout. I can't make head or tail of it. I can't read anything that's written on there. So I'm I'm I mean I know it's only indicative, but I can't make a decision based on this. Um, I'm extremely concerned at the loss of trees, um, and and also the, um, the the actual whether or not it is actually a healthy environment to live in, um, and um, and and so uh, uh, one thing I'm not that concerned about is is the um, is the uh, the access because of course I'm sure when uh, people or whoever it was um, applied to build a nursing home there there was probably people saying, oh, how about the access to a nursing home out to this busy road and stuff? I mean, I, to be honest, I'm not an expert, of course, but I mean, I can't see that having 18 uh, dwellings would, would actually um, add very much to that. So that, that wouldn't be a problem to me. But I'm just concerned about, about saying, OK, yeah, we think it's a great idea, because that's what we'd be saying. It's a great idea to have 18 dwelling houses there. And then the rug's pulled from under our feet and then we get presented with something. We're thinking, oh God! I mean, that, we really don't like that. Um, and then, and then, what sort of position does that put us in when we then are told, um, well, you know, you've got to be careful because they'll appeal and so on and so on. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I and, and also I, I, as, as far as not being presented with all the information, I, I, I think that's a very, very important thing. We ought to have as much information as we possibly can to make such a big decision on this on this application. Thank, thank you, Chair. Thank you. OK, so um, thank you all very much for your comments. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm feeling as though we, we should be going for a deferral. Um, with the end in sight, with the, the light, light at the end of the tunnel with June the 21st, I, I believe that we could potentially get out and do a site visit at the end of uh, March. Uh, Mr. Palmer or Mr. Collins would have to come back with, to, to me and tell, tell me whether or not that's correct, because we would all need to be able to meet on site um, to, to be able to sort of go through this and discuss it fully um, with, with more paperwork in front of us. Um, and I think because it is such a difficult site to decide on, that, that there is an awful lot of 
trees there. It has been around for 50 years. We have got potentially flooding conditions. Um, I, I think it would be useful for us to go down there with the officers and uh, actually have a proper tour and talk through all the pros and cons of what we're potentially implicating ourselves into. So, Mr. Palmer, I've seen you've turned your mute off. Could, could you help me out with, with uh, a deferral here and how we could go about it? Thank, thank you, Chairman. Uh, Lee Palmer, head, head of planning. Um, yes, I, I, I've listened to the debate and uh, I, I think it is prudent to for a deferral uh, for one of two reasons. One is to uh, explore and understand and represent back to you the ecological uh, information we've received very late in the day from County Council. But more importantly, to host as much as we can a collective site visit. Now, we, we are obviously in the, uh, the roadmap of coming out of COVID uh, and that the timetabling of that will be quite sensitive in terms of rule of six, etc. Um, so whether we have to do it in two halves um, and, and then reconvene uh, in a virtual environment, um, what I wouldn't necessarily want to promote is that we defer indefinitely until we can meet as a as a complete collective, because I think that will put a, an undue delay on the process. So we would look, um, take it offline, Chairman, we will accept the deferral. We will seek uh, advice from uh, our colleagues in terms of the rule of six and whether we have to um, convene in, in two halves, in two separate stages, uh, and then reconvene in a virtual capacity. Many thanks. Thank you. So that would work quite well because if we if, if if we've got two choices for meetings uh, where we can meet on site uh, with the officers, then that keeps the options open for everybody. Um, uh, so if you're all happy with that, Councillor Taylor, I see your hands up. It is, Mr. Chairman. I'm not happy with that. I moved that we should refuse this application. And it's your duty as chairman to put that through if I can get a seconder for the refusal. And then you can go on for deferral. You seem to have gone into deferral and site visit on your own volition. I, I moved earlier and it was I wasn't prejudiced. I moved and I it wanted a, a voted rec uh, recorded vote on a refusal. If I can get a seconder, I may not get a seconder. Okay, I, I, I'm not. I'm, I'm not going to keep going over the, the, the issue. If you would like to um, move for a refusal, um, I would need a seconder for that, please. Councillor Metcalf, thank you. So um, we have a motion. Chairman, through, through, through you, before moving to the refusal, can I just um, put some words to committee so they know what they're voting on? Thank you. Um, I, in listening to the debate, I think the following uh, summarises the concerns raised by members. Uh, the council are not satisfied that the proposal can be accommodated at the site without causing material harm to interests of ecological and arboricultural importance. And moreover, given the existing topography, it is likely to result in an inhospitable living environment for the occupiers of any new residential dwellings. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Taylor, are you happy with that wording? Yes, Mr Chairman, I think... Uh... Thank you. Okay, so let me just get my paperwork here so that we do this properly. So, we do not have uh, a proposal for recommendation, uh, but what we do have is a proposal for um, refusal from Councillor Taylor, which is seconded from, by Councillor Metcalf. So, we will take that motion first. Um, so, and, uh, we have a name? Named vote, Mr. Chairman, please. And we could have a named vote. Um, and I will ask you all to vote either for or against the refusal um, or, or abstain. And at that point as well, please make sure that you mention whether or not you have lost any internet connection whilst this debate has been going on. So we're voting either for or against a refusal. 
for, for this application. So Councillor Diflock. Thank you, Chair. I'm going to vote against based on uh, I'd like to see the ecology report before I make a final decision. Thank you. I did not lose connection at any point. Thank you. Um, sorry, my wording's wrong here. I've got Councillor Metcalf. Sorry. Thank you, Chair. Yes, I vote for and I did not lose any internet connection. Thank you. Councillor Mac Maxted. Uh, against and I didn't lose any internet connection. Thank you. Councillor Mia. You're on mute, Councillor Mia. Yeah, I got it now. Um, can you hear me? We can, yes. Right, I'm against and I haven't lost any connection. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Murdoch. Uh, Councillor Murdoch, four, and I did not lose any internet connection. Thank you. Councillor Taylor. Four, and I did not lose any internet connection. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Vaughan. Against, and I didn't lose any connection. Thank you. Thank you. And I, Councillor Jim Murray, will vote against the refusal, um, and I also did not lose any connection. If I can go over to uh, Mrs Horn for a count, please. Uh, yes, Chair. Emily Horn, Committee Officer speaking. I confirm we've got five votes against refusal and three votes for refusal. And Thank can you. I confirm that they've been a named vote, please? Uh, you can indeed. Yes, they are a named vote. Thank you. So the, the, the refusal um, recommendation fails. So we will revert now back to the re recommendation for approval, which we're not also going to take. We're going to go for a deferral um, for, for a site visit to be arranged by the officers at the earliest possible time. Um, bearing in mind, we've got to comply with the COVID rules. Uh, I need a proposer for that, please. Councillor Diplock, thank you. And a seconder, Councillor Mia. And we will now go through that process again. So we are now voting for a deferral. I need you to say whether or not you are for or against and that you kept your internet connection, please. So Councillor Diplock. Uh, for and I kept my internet connection. Thank you. Councillor Metcalf. For <laughs> and I did not lose internet connection. Thank you. Councillor Maxted. Four, and I didn't lose internet connection. Thank you. Councillor Mia. Four, and I did not lose any connection. Thank you. Councillor Murdoch. Four, and I did not lose internet connection. Councillor Taylor. Against, Mr Chairman, and I hope I'm recorded as being against that. Thank you. But probably not. <laughs> Councillor Vaughan. Four, and I didn't lose any internet connection. Thank you. And I, Councillor Jim Murray, will be voting for the referral. Um, and I also did not lose any internet connection. So the application number 200855, proposal for outline ap application with all matters reserved, uh, will be referred um, subject to the officers coming back to us with a couple of dates. Thank you all very much for that lively debate. Um, we move on to count uh, item number eight. Um, application number 190706, uh, proposal for outline application for uh, new access from Pennine Way to serve the development of land at Friday Street Farm for up to 250 residential dwellings. And this one, I believe, is yours, Mr Palmer. Thank you, Chairman. Just a very brief introduction to the issues that have changed new information since application was deferred from your January committee. Uh, on page 30 of your report, 1.2, members will note that the applicant uh, has moved to undertake the works to Pennine Way uh, now to be pre-commencement of any construction. So that, that, that's a win. Uh, in terms of uh, Lion Hill Junction, uh, as supplemented by your addendum report, uh, County Council are happy with the works that have taken place at the Lion Hill Junction to date and we'll keep that matter under review. 
in relation to the Golden Jubilee Way, Dissons Road Junction, uh, the report outlines that that is uh, part of a multi-million pound scheme between Eastbourne and uh, North Hailsham that will be funded by central government and county advise us that that will be uh, decided upon in a favourable way uh, very, very imminently. Notwithstanding that, uh, Weald and District Council have confirmed that if the government money does not materialise, there are sufficient funds within uh, Weald uh, and District Council's community infrastructure levy funds uh, to undertake that work if they need to. There, in addition, we of them have confirmed that they will be contributing 15.15% of the £35 million improvement scheme for that Eastbourne North Hailsham improvements. Chairman, um, the issue has um, moved on in terms of the requirement for the Golden Jubilee Way and Ditton's Road Junction to be completed prior to occupation because the issue for the County Council is that the harm created by this development in and of itself is marginal, marginal negligible upon that junction. So the condition that was formally tabled has been withdrawn uh, and we are now commending the scheme to committee for approval subject to the legal agreement, heads of terms, uh, on page 29. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. We have uh, the local councillor here who would like to speak. Um, so if Mr. Councillor Shuttleworth, if you would like to introduce yourself and uh, make your speech, you have the usual three minutes and you'll be timed by our Democratic Service Officer, um, Emily Horn. She will let you know when you've had, when you've had your three minutes. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Councillor Alan Shuttleworth from the Langley Ward. Um, committee, this is the fifth planning committee that I've addressed now about Friday Street Farm application. And in my view, nothing significant has changed in terms of the basic application. This application should be refused. So many people oppose building on this unique piece of the green belt and recognise the enormous impact in terms of traffic congestion, pollution, and damage to the environment and to protected species, as well as the flooding impact and inadequacies in pumping and wastewater sewage arrangements. This committee is restricted to the access issue and the traffic congestion that will result. As far as the traffic issues are concerned, I reiterate my objection and ask the committee to refuse planning permission on the grounds that the additional traffic will cause an unacceptable severe congestion impact without the necessary mitigations, which frankly are still not guaranteed. I remind the committee that Pennine Way is the only route in and out of this area for many hundreds of existing properties, never mind the increased traffic from this development. The East Sussex Highway submission states that uncertainty over delivery of these mitigation works justifies an objection on the grounds of the severe impact on traffic movement. The planning report seeks to reassure us by quoting uh, a high degree of confidence that government monies will be forthcoming. That is not giving certainty. Weald and Council offer 15% SIL monies towards the cost with a throwaway offer that they will find money from the dip for the difference. But they have also told us that sufficient SILs funds are not secure. Both promises sound more like Del Boy than they do a watertight planning agreement that we require. Capacity assessments of other local junctions show overcapacity issues at peak times. Delays and traffic congestion at these local junctions are not even being properly considered in this submission. East Sussex Director of Communities advised you, and I quote, that a planning condition should be applied to any permission granted that restricts occupancy until the full funding for the strategic highway improvements is confirmed. This condition must be included. But I believe that permission should still be withheld as there is no certainty of the highway funding, only unsubstantiated promises of jam tomorrow. 
The planning committee must follow the highway's advice, refuse planning permission due to the inevitable impact in Pennine Way, as well as the severe impact highways, quote, on the surrounding road network without the guarantees of the funding for all the required mitigation works. I ask the committee to turn this down. Thank you. Thank you very much, okay. Councillor. I'm getting a bit of echo. Has somebody got their speaker on? No, it's gone. Uh, Councillor Vaughan, would you like to start the, uh, the discussion? Thank you, Chair. Councillor Candy Vaughan, Langley Ward. Um, yes, it, it does seem as though all the boundaries have been moved since this first came to planning. Uh, all the roadworks would be completed before they even started to build. So um, it seems to be going by the way. Um, it's, uh, what was it? In November, the recommendation was to grant outline planning permission subject to legal agreement to ensure completion of access and mitigation works prior to commencement of the housing development adjacent and subject to conditions. So now we've gone to, oh yes, it's going to be done whenever East Sussex County Council wants it done. So that means it, it may never appear. So um, I must say that uh, I'm not very happy about this. Um, and, and I think it's just leaving Eastbourne to um, fend for itself when everything's all done and dusted. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have anybody else who would like to speak on this? Councillor Metcalf. Thank you, Chair. Yes, I would like to speak. I do have a few concerns. And the major concern is that I know the road quite well, Pennine Way. It is a road that is a shortcut from the A22 into Sovereign Harbour and to my part of the town. And it's a road that I regularly use coming down on the A22, Polgate Bypass, and then down through Stone Cross and down through Pennine Way. Driving down Pennine Way, I've counted that there are eight junctions that lead from all the housing estates and the developments alongside that area. And one of my great concerns is not only coming into Sovereign Harbour and this area, but actually leaving and going out on Pennine Way, turning onto Friday Street, the B2104. The Friday Street is a 40 mile an hour road and Pennine Way is only 30. Now, way traffic does come down Friday Street. I always fear turning out onto Friday Street from Pennine Way because of the speed of the traffic that's there. Um, and I just feel that this application is going to add a huge amount more traffic along Pennine Way, um, and it's going to make it quite unbearable. And, and uh, can I say the word dangerous? I think I'm right in saying there's been some tragedies uh, not too far from the junction of Pennine Way to Friday Street in the past. And I feel that uh, this application should be um, turned down in much the same way and for many of the reasons that have been mentioned by Councillor Shuttleworth. Thank you, Chair. Sorry, thank you, Councillor Maxted. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'd, I'd first of all like to commend Councillor Shuttleworth on his dogged determination in representing the, um, the, the best interests of his constituents in Langley Ward and, and in this particular area as well, and also his fellow councillors, Councillor Meir and Councillor Vaughan. Um, I, mean, I, I, I appreciate, because this is the third time it's come up, so I should appreciate it by now, that we're not looking at the planning consent for the houses. That's already been approved. Wheel and District Council um, actually uh, considered it in May last year and, and refused it, and quite rightly so. Um, but then it came back with a couple of slight tweaks in September, I think it was. Um, and um, and, and the, the council, uh, were, were the planning committee were basically told by the planning officers, and I don't know the guy's name, 
that, that if you turn this down, um, the applicant has taken legal advice and, and they will definitely win the appeal and Wilden District Council will be hit for hundreds of thousands of pounds in costs. Um, and, and I mean, this, this, this sort of isn't new to, to people on planning committees to, to, to take into account um, the risk of appeals, but um, they were quite dogmatic about it. But despite this, the vote was still split. Um, six councillors were in favour of it, three were against and three abstained. I know this, I know planning committees are um, apolitical, so I won't, I won't say what political persuasion those were, those six were who voted in favour of it. But um, but those those in favour had to choose between their conscience and upsetting the government uh, or, or their 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 people, the um, the 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 inspectors, the planning inspectors, um, um, as as and and I think as as none of the objectors or those people would be affected actually were Wealdon residents. This actually took took that out of the equation that they actually would not be losing any any face any votes from 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 people they're elected to represent um, and so Eastbourne Borough Council uh, planning department and and now ourselves are left with with this mess of an application that should never have been granted by an authority that um, that, that bears no consequences for for them. I mean, everything is is going to to adversely affect people of of Pennine Way and and and, and East Bourborough Council. Um, so, uh, and notwithstanding the risks now have been passed to us, if we were to to refuse this application, then 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 the risk of 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 the appeal would would now be now be over to us, um, and um, and we are over a barrel. Um, and I think as a committee, uh, I'm, I'm, I, I hear what uh, other people are saying about the traffic. It's something I mentioned before. It's something that I've actually been aware of during my time on, on community speed watch in Pennine Way in particular, the speed in traffic is, is, is lethal. Uh, I'm, I'm very disappointed that the council haven't been able to, to, to get better traffic calming system. There is some sort of compensation with the people that live there. But I do feel as though we've exhausted every avenue, and um, and and left with Hobson's choice, uh, and and that's it. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Yes, I I, I come from Hamden Park, and we've got a very similar problem up there with Broderick Lands, where we've got uh, three hundred and fifty houses being built in 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 Broderick Lands, right on the border of uh, Hamden Park. Um, we told them that there'd be flooding problems. They said that they won't be. There is flooding problems. We told them there'd be traffic problems. They said that they wouldn't be, and there is. But we we we're in a position where the, the planning permission had been granted by Wielden, um, and we didn't have anywhere that we could go, and we had to grant the access onto the site again to there. So it's it's almost an identical situation. Um, we, it's very frustrating where we 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 feel as though we're being bullied into this situation, but we have for everything that we possibly can do legally. We've been given everything that we can do sort of legally. We've, we've got the, the, the access road sorted out um, as best we can, <clears throat> with traffic mitigation being put in place, um, and all of this is going to be done pre-commencement. So um, everything that we've asked for coming up to this meeting, we have now got. Um, so uh, I've got Councillor Mir, and then uh, after Councillor Mir, if nobody else wants to speak, then we'll we'll go to um, a recommendation. Thank you. You're muted, Councillor Mir. Okay, am I on now? Thank you. Yeah. Yes, you're on now. Um, well, looking at the whole situation, as already uh, the colleagues and the councillors has already mentioned a few things, uh, I'm not going to go to a long story, but cut the story short. Um, obviously, we have tried everything, but it still seems to me that 
every promises comes promises. And as, I'm for, I, as far as I'm concerned, promises make to break, believe me or not. Um, in my life experience, that's what I have came through. Um, so in that case, promises has been already made, but the law says a different thing. And it, it's kind of bullying in a way, saying that the law will go against us, which, yeah, we agree, um, we cannot beat the law. The law is made for everyone. Um, but unfortunately, it, it seems that, um, you know, it, it's not going to happen because there has been many, many promises I've seen through my time uh, made by, okay, this will be done, that will be done. But one particular thing I have to mention, that there was a, a little girl got killed in Friday Street, which is not definitely in Penine Way, but it is Friday Street. And I have to agree with um, other councillors um, that, you know, I mean, these dangerous things that has to be looking at. But uh, for, unfortunately, some of the um, uh, the officers sits in their um, county and, you know, all the other departments and they think, oh, yeah, yeah, the internet hasn't got this report, that report, okay, we can't see that. Okay, no problem, we'll just say yes and no. Uh, but unfortunately, we are living here physically, and we talk about our uh, physical and visual area where we experience personally every day, every night. Um, however, um, in that situation, really, I don't know what to say, but I would like to hear from other colleagues if they have got anything to say and then to take the decision. So I'll be uh, quite grateful to listen to others. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm seeing no further hands up, so I will go to a recommendation. Um, I'm happy to move from the chair for approval. I can have a seconder. Councillor Diplock, thank you. So we have a recommendation to grant outline planning permission subject to legal agreement covering the following issues and subject to the conditions listed below in the report. Um, so we will now go to a vote. I'll call out each one of your names and please either vote for approval or against approval or abstain. Um, and I'll call your names out and please, again, just make sure that you tell me whether or not you've lost any internet connection. So, Councillor Diplock. For and I did not lose internet connection. Thank you. Councillor Maxted. I'm, I'm, sadly, I'm, I'm voting for and I didn't lose any internet connection. Thank you. Councillor Metcalf. I voted against and I did not lose any internet connection. Thank you. Councillor Mia. You're muted, Councillor Mia. I'm against and I did not lose any connection. Thank you. Councillor Murdoch. I'm four and I did not lose internet connection. Thank you. Councillor Taylor. I'm four and I didn't lose any uh, internet connection. Thank you. Councillor Vaughan. I abstain and I didn't lose any connection. Thank you. Councillor Murray. Uh, so, so I, Councillor Murray, will be voting for um, and I also did not lose any uh, um, connection. Um, if I can go to the officer, Emily Horn, if we can have a count for the vote, please. Uh, yes, Chair. Emily Horn, committee officer speaking. We have five votes for the officer's recommendation, two votes against the officer's recommendation and one abstention. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. So in the case of application number 190706, um, the proposal for outline application has been moved to approve. Um, much against the uh, committee's wishes, uh, sort of generally. <laughs> but uh, thank, thank you all very much for your time. Uh, do I have any comments at all from the officers? No. So the next committee meeting is scheduled to be held as a remote meeting at 6 p.m. on the 23rd of March 2021. Uh, the agenda is complete. Thank you all for attending. And I close this meeting at 17.54. Thank you, Chair.